Hi all, I have another entertaining game by David Grosvenor. So he played Leela against the Fire 7.1 chess engine at a fast and furious 40 moves per 2 minutes with a 2 second increment per move. So let's have a look at this. The opening book given the French defence. So we have the Winnower territory of the A3, Bishop takes C3. Check, B takes c5 now a4 this is this is a very interesting move actually a4 here quite often in this position queen g4 is chosen and there's a very popular sequence used uh, by a lot of players in chess base live book which runs like this with bishop taking on g6 and it's thought to be about even the dynamic uh, dynamically uh, balanced so a4 it has a logical intention and one can see this idea in many of Bobby Fisher's games to try and put the bishop on this diagonal sometimes, which is more sensitive than usual. Black castled. Bishop d3. We have queen a5. Bishop d2 protecting that pawn. h6. Now, if here, knight b c6, this is a, an interesting direct attempt at a hack attack with g4, for example. Uh, this situation could be extremely dangerous for black for example this the hack attack scenarios are actually as this as this shows quite dangerous uh, it's just a simulation so a safety point here h6 to avoid that sort of thing with queen h5 but uh, now it's still dangerous though uh, we have g4 in this position c4 the bishop drops back bishop d7 g5 trying to open up lines h5 on hg then Lila could play h4 this situation with that g file is very nice for white you can see that that's a good attacking prospect there so we have h5 queen takes b5 yeah black is reduced at the moment to playing on the queen side to try and win the poor a pawn but with Leela's A pawn's vengeance is sometimes sought by the other pieces. And here, yes, the A pawn is taken. Will Leela get revenge there for that pawn? Bishop h3 is played. We have knight g6. Bishop c1. The bishop is prepared to take this diagonal to nudge that rook away sometimes. Now white castles. Knight goes back to e7, knight g e7 here, bishop a3, rook f b8, we have f4, and there's potential for f5 being dangerous here. We have g6 sealing things up. If we have uh, a move instead of g6, rook b7, f5 here, actually there's a rook lift, rook f4 to h4, which might be dangerous. This scenario is also extremely Good. That's checkmate now because you can see the bishops stopping the king escape. So this is very very nice. If knight, if something like knight takes, um, sorry, if knight takes d4, c takes. This scenario is also not too good for black either. So uh, we have g6, queen h4. The queen drops back. Yes, putting the queen on h6 might not be as effectual as what Leela actually does, which is start to engage in sliding block puzzles, not to have an Anakine's gun. An Anakine's gun is when the queen is at the base of two rooks. But it's important that the front of the line of artillery can't be the queen here, actually. We have a rook wanting to be heading the pressure on the h-file. And we see a wonderful sliding block puzzle mechanism here. Queen d8, bishop g4, which gives that h3 square for usage as well now. So you can see that the queen could move back, the rook could move and get to the front of the queue here visually. Because now, look, the queen f8 is greeting. If the queen was at the front of the queue, there'll be a queen exchange and fizzle probably. But the queen wants this rook on f3 to be at the front of the queue of artillery. Uh, if we look at rook h3 here, just to show, queen g7, it's, it's harmless. 
uh, what an expensive uh, if if this happens here though it could still work but not with queen h6 that'll be harmless so let's go into the game continuation we might as well just check the game continuation it starts immediately this reshuffling procedure rook h3 to put the rook at the front of the queue queen g7 now we have king g2 here king f8 rook h6 rook 8 b7 now queen h4 King G8, so the king is safeguarding with the queen the H7 square and the H8 square. So, is there actually time to make use of this rook? Well, at the moment there is. Black hasn't been able to get rook B1 in. Uh, so, rook F1, just the nick of time before something like rook B1. So, we have knight B4. This looks a little bit on the desperate side actually already. <laughs> there, there might be no bad reason. In fact, just to take this knight so it is a sign of absolute desperation <laughs> but yeah what exactly does black do here the problem is if an attempt to escape is made then rook h7 and if the queen goes there then rook h8 pinning the queen winning as an example so black's a sitting duck and this doesn't really help in fact it's totally ignored. Leela's not even interested. Rook f3, just to get rook h3. So we've got this tower of power, as one of you mentioned. That could be a good expression, this tower of power. So the queen in the center of the two rooks this time. As long as the head of the queue here is a rook, it's really dangerous. a5 is played. On knight takes c2, yeah, rook h3, as it expects, is destructive. Uh, it's it's going to be destructive and the same sort of mechanisms as before otherwise rook h8 is kind of mating if we look at this uh you know rook h8 check would force taking a checkmate tower of power uh at work there uh let's have a look if um instead of rook h3 also bishop takes e7 is possible of course in that line uh so anyway Rook f3, a5, black's just given up, it seems. Tower of power is installed with deadly uh, threats, which are very difficult, impossible to parry. It's just too powerful. Yeah, this is just getting an unequal distribution of force where the black rooks are not helping at all. The queen is working well with her two rooks here. King f8, and now rook h7, terminating the black queen, actually. Yeah, because if queen g8, rook h8, just winning the queen. And in fact, if white wants to be sadistic and not just take the queen, queen g7, queen takes f7, super sadism, scooping up all the pieces, even better. But uh, yeah, this is winning, of course. And the rest is just, let's see, rook h7, queen g7. And the game ended here. Uh, an interesting clinical finish might be f5 actually breaking through with f5 for bishop h5 now bishop takes f7 is on the cards bishop e8 now knight f4 and this is really destructive uh, taking this for example taking that to get the rook away from the seventh knight takes e6 is just devastation winning that rook there look at this because the, the rook is hanging here so taking the rook any anything it will do really it's it's just total devastation but anyway uh so another kind of amusing game from david grovener with our blitz we can have a lot of fun <laughs> with leela on, on these faster time controls so she does seem to be extremely dangerous on the fast time controls as well as having great scale scalability as proven on the more official tournaments with much greater hardware uh, so great stuff here I thought thank you Dave for that game I hope everyone else found it entertaining comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much